It's the Councilman Joe Marino from the city of Utica. In good morning, Joe. How are you? Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Mark. How so are you? Have you been hired by the Rubio campaign to stand up for him Gosh. in some of these events that he has? There's, there's I a have, resemblance. Have I you have heard, heard several times that I resemble Marco Rubio. You get that, Joe? I get that quite often. Believe it or the not, the looks and the voice, you or yeah, the voice. I've heard. Yeah, a couple people have said that I, I speak like him a little, or, or I like to say he speaks like me. Do you want know. me to do? I'll do my Bernie Sanders, and you could do your Marco Rubio, and we. Can I, I guess I'm doing my Marco Are Rubio. You? I don't even. I don't know. believe it. I think you should do better. I'll That's do my Donald Trump. I built a tremendous company. <laughs> <laughs> tremendous company. I have all the major assets in the world. Mark was okay. Jay I'm sounded like an Irish man. I'm gonna make this, I'll make this country greater than it's ever been. I'm like my best Bernie Sanders. Trading president ever. <laughs> But I built a tremendous company. <laughs> Those guys, it is an entertaining show, this election cycle, that's for sure. How was the show last night with the Master Plan Advisory Committee? You guys met to talk about maybe moving forward and incorporating the uh, community a bit on their thoughts of their plans going forward with the Master Plan, right, Joe? I like the way he said right. how was the show last night. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, it was an entertaining show there, too. Uh, you know, it... Uh, we, we talk about this master plan and where we are moving forward with it, and mm-hmm. you know we're continuing to progress. Um, we talk about it being a living, breathing document and how it's you know it's moldable. And um, there are things that have happened with the master plan, and the Urban Economic Development Office has done a terrific job in updating the matrix as to how we've progressed. Uh, but I don't think that the people of the city of Utica can see it or touch it. So I think that they believe. And this is what we're trying to find out is, do you believe that the master plan is being implemented and moving forward? And I think that most people will tell you, and I'm just this is just my opinion, but I think that most people will tell you that it's a document just sitting on a desk somewhere collecting What dust. would you tell them? I would tell them to come to these meetings on March 19th and March 22nd and let us know what you think and how we could tangibly affect change through this master plan. And that's what we're doing now. We're going to do a little outreach. You'll hear a lot more about it in the future. We'll advertise those dates. But um, what we came up with last night was an email address first uh, because these roundtable sessions are going to go uh, rather briefly, we're going to get you know some really positive feedback, we hope. So a way for folks to contact you with their ideas or topics or concerns or whatever it may be? Right. And, I mean, again, it's so infantile. We literally just created it last night at a meeting, but it's UticaMasterPlan at gmail.com. And you referred to the master plan as a living, breathing document, and right. that is due to the fact because of when it was implemented, changes are occurring, changes will continue to occur, and Correct. some of the places that are in focus for the master plan. Well, right? absolutely. In 2011, when it was designed, I'm sure no one thought that we would have a world-class uh, AAA, so to speak, uh, NHL farm team here. Right. No, no one thought that a hospital would even be discussed. Mm-hmm. So there are there are changes to the environment of this city, and there's positive everywhere. And uh, so we do need to update it and, and keep it going. And, you know, one of the things, and the reason I say the living, breathing document is this is actually, the, this committee is actually going to affect change inside the document. It's not, you know, the people's opinions that we get are not going to fall on deaf ears. It's not going to be just an exercise in futility, so to speak. It's going to actually be something where we put an addendum on the official master plan to say where we were, where we are, and where we're going as of, you know, mid-July, uh, mid-June 2016. And hopefully, you know, as time goes on, we, we do a couple of these a year and uh, or a, a couple of years every so often. We, we get a hold of this document, put our hands around it, and, and take a look at it and see where we are. So the yes, irony we- of that is Marco Rubio has said that the U.S. Constitution is not a living, breathing <laughs> document that should be changed. Look at that. It should be applied the same way it was written 200 <laughs> years ago. So you've contrasted the master plan with Marco Rubio's Well, I am a Democrat, and I have no, the, I have no the, problem uh, contrasting <laughs> myself with Mr. Rubio, although, you know, he is an intelligent guy. You have to give him credit, I think. Uh, Good-looking he, guy, maybe. I don't know. Um, he does look like me. I, mean, I, know, <laughs> I know people said I look like him, but he does look like me. He so. looks like you. You don't look like him. Is That's that the exactly way? right. I, yeah, yeah I may not be a senator from Florida or running for president, but, uh, but you could just switch places, and it would be like one of those <laughs> oh, movies where you just switch places. No, no. Yeah. I, I would much rather be here in Utica than on that stage any day. Yeah, there you I go. have to tell you something that I I'm going to compliment the city on something. And you're not going to have any idea what I'm going to say. But sometimes less is better. And usually when people think of improving, they think of doing more things and adding things. I am very happy with something that's been happening. And I hope you continue to do it. And that is there are a number of street lights that have been removed and are and are covered up and then removed. Uh, one today that I noticed was the one at Hillside Gardens and on, on Oneida Street. Right. And there was one on Mohawk Street that they took off. There are some of these street lights that 
are in intersections where there's so little traffic. There's one on Mohawk and Arthur Street. Mm-hmm. One direction is the police, is the fire department, so that's only active if there's a fire. In the other direction, you never see any traffic coming on there. Sure. I think I don't think people. And there's might another stop light right it. after that yeah, at uh, right after. James James yeah. Street. Yeah. James yeah. and Mohawk. Yeah. Right. James I don't think people mind stopping at an intersection and waiting for traffic. So if there's a stop sign, you wait till the cars go by. But nothing's more frustrating to sit at a red light and you can look, see clearly in every direction and you're sitting there like an idiot waiting for the light to change and there's nothing around. Speak for yourself, Mark. I am. I feel like an idiot when I do that. And I, it, stop signs are very effective. You stop, you check. When it's free, you move. And I am so happy to see a lot of these street lights, or street, uh, not street lights, but uh, stop lights, traffic, or traffic lights, lights mm-hmm. being removed, and it's making the traffic flow smoother. And I know they're expensive to keep those well, and operate the those. That's There's a lot of expense you're saving. Yeah. A stop sign is pretty inexpensive compared to operating those, those lights. About thirty-eight dollars for a stop sign, or and those lights. Do you know how much they are? There, there's a yearly cost to those. Well, one intersection, the engineer's office will tell you with the controller, the big silver box on yes. the side, the four lights that go around. Because don't forget, there are four actual individual yes. traffic lights in, yeah. in any one particular stop uh, intersection. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's about sixty thousand dollars for $60, one intersection. Sixty thousand dollars for one intersection. Then you got to so, talk about the upkeep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, well, no, that's the thing. I mean, you, you know, what we'd like to do, and the engineer's office has done a great job, is we're auditing uh, along with the police department. We're trying to audit which lights are necessary, which aren't, because of those those factors. So uh, I will pass along the message to them that they're... Uh, I think that that is wonderful, because anything that will make traffic move it enhances the city. What we see every day, I'll get to, just use me as an example. Sure. What I notice every day in the city is the street lights, the condition of the roads, is the trash picked up, are the streets plowed. That's what I notice. Right. I know they have programs in City Hall for various things. I don't... They don't impact me on a day-to-day basis Correct. But those things do and when you can move through traffic quickly and and not have to stop at a lot of lights it's such a, an improvement to the quality of our lives and i've noticed that and i think other people have and i'll tell you too that that roundabout is the best thing they ever did i was on board that with it from the, the beginning it was before i was elected but I, I, I couldn't agree more i thought that was going to be a big disaster like everybody else has it's never going to work folks you've got to pay attention better. to that if you're that works so smoothly and i'll tell you in jamaica they don't have traffic lights because they don't have the money to pay for them. So they use those roundabouts all the time. Sure. But in Jamaica, you're driving on the opposite side of the road. So you go in one of those, you come out, and you're, you're facing traffic. Well, certainly out. as an American, I'm sure yeah, as I mean, well. I, it gets a little I did confusing. that once. I said that somebody else could drive. Yeah. But that works well. But I'm so happy to see you guys pulling those lights down. The money that you save and the time people don't save and not having to stop. Because some of these intersections, there's... Yeah, it's a one-way street. There's very little traffic. Yeah. Stop sign will do fine. So I just want to No, I appreciate it. Like I you. said, our engineer's office has done a terrific job with the limited resources that we all have in, in the city yeah. of Utica. So they've uh, they've really done a, a yeoman's job with that, and they're trying even further, obviously, and, and I appreciate it. And the police department has been instrumental in doing traffic studies as well to see what, what well, works. Keep so. up the good work because that's great. I'll pass that along. Thank you so all much. All right, we're going to take a quick break. There's a phone call on the on the line for you, Joe, but i got to get your headphones on. But before, just quickly, yesterday with the master plan, so the idea for you to convene was to start setting up the process for community uh, folks in involvement there and maybe set some dates for some meetings for the community? Listen, transparency, transparency, cool. transparency, and inclusion, 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 and that's our message going forward, and we're trying to get as many people as possible. Involved. Next step, any dates set for? We do. March 19th, Saturday, uh, will be a, a figure-eight discussion, almost like a round table, but it's a figure-eight discussion, and March 26th will be another Saturday. We wanted to make them Saturdays in case any Anyone had an obligation at work Great. that they couldn't, you know, couldn't make it. So Saturdays seem to uh, to be as inclusive and po- as possible. And you'll hear that word from me over and over again. Transparency and inclusion in this process is really vital.